first book on earth to claim to have been authored by alien beings. There are other intelligences who come from outside of this solar system. Jesus, among others, was thought to be an alien who came from outer space. Jesus, Moses, Mohammed, uh, Buddha, Gandhi, these are names that everybody recognizes being sincere, um, evolved souls, very advanced beings who have come to our planet. Jesus is still alive. While modern day scientists search the heavens for some sign of intelligent life, others have focused the search to Earth itself. It is no secret that many believe that UFOs may be spacecraft piloted by beings from distant worlds. However, what may be surprising is that many believe that these alien beings have been visiting man for thousands of years. This is an actual 14th century fresco from a church in Eastern Europe. It depicts a man flying across the heavens in an egg-shaped vehicle. In this Renaissance painting of the Madonna, a small hovering object can be seen in the background. Upon closer examination, we can see that this strange object has caught the attention of a man and his dog. Here, we see a French token minted in the 1680s, which has engraved a large disc-shaped flying object that some claim commemorates a daytime UFO sighting. Several experts feel this is evidence of ancient astronauts who flew to the Earth and were worshipped as gods. This has come to be known as the ancient astronaut hypothesis. Space people came to Earth uh, many thousands of years ago and tampered with the genes of the, uh, the humanoid apes of the time to produce the human race. There are those who believe that convincing evidence can be found in nearly every ancient religious manuscript. Evidence that interprets what traditionally is believed to be gods or angels as alien beings. There are several references in the Bible of those who come from the sky and flying chariots of fire. In the book of 2 Kings, a chariot of fire appears and takes Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Many interpret this event to be one of the first UFO abductions. It is also believed that these ancient flying gods provided mankind with the technology to create the many unexplained architectural wonders of the world. What we now know, for example, about the, the uh, Incas and the Mayas and ancient Egyptian civilization, which seems to suggest, seem to suggest, I'm becoming more and more convinced personally of this, that we do in fact have some lost civilizations. While across the Atlantic Ocean, another ancient civilization has created another mystery that some claim could only be of extraterrestrial origin. Scientists claim that the early Peruvians, known as the Incas, carved these strange figures on the Nazca Plains. But these figures are so large that they can only be seen from the air. One figure alone stretches over 275 yards. But what is even more bizarre is that 200 miles away, on a plateau at the foot of the Andes, exists another figure. This 840-foot candelabra points directly to the plains of Nazca. What was the purpose of these figures that could only be seen from the heavens? Could these artifacts be evidence of ancient visitations by an advanced race of extraterrestrials? Maybe 
hundred thousand years ago or sometime millions of years ago, UFO beings from other planets came here and seeded this planet and we are a result of that seeding. It, it's a logical kind of deduction given the artifacts that are, are left uh, behind if one wanted to see one's origin as being somewhere other than Earth and at some time in the ancient past. We tend to think of God as being an other, as being different than ourselves, as being um, semi-alien and extraterrestrial. And so that these, um, the, the way people think of UFOs as being piloted by alien extraterrestrials fits into that tradition. Another popular controversy is the reference to the Nephilim in the book of Genesis. This is a very popular myth, uh, the idea of the Nephilim and the uh, angels that came down and, and mated with uh, people on earth. The word Nephilim comes from the Hebrew word nophel, to fall. They sort of fell out of grace. And according to legends, they came down, they had uh, sexual relations with, with the people on earth. It's been very popular in UFO circles to say, well, this, this is a, uh, an ancient reference to what today we call UFOs. Angels. The meaning in Latin, Angelos, is messenger, nothing else. So we, we show always uh, beautiful little boys or, uh, with, uh, with wings. This is a symbol to say people, messengers from space who can fly. So when you don't know how to make an airplane, you, you think that all which can fly has to have wings like birds. That's the image which created this beautiful but poetic image of angels, but it's the real angels are coming in UFO. Carl Jung, the uh, famous uh, psychologist, referred to UFOs as technological angels. Jesus, when he was here, in, in all the written scriptures that we can find, was quoted as saying, I am not of this world. It's the very popularity of the Bible that means that groups that don't particularly follow the Bible like to nevertheless pick and choose some Bible verses they can quote and support. Uh, and it helps them integrate into the larger culture where most of the people do believe the Bible. Jesus, Moses, Mohammed, uh, Buddha, Gandhi, these are names that everybody recognizes being sincere, um, evolved souls, very advanced beings who have come to our planet to help planet Earth move forward. Other teachers have come, Buddha, Krishna, uh, to name just two more. These intelligences were extraterrestrials. You understand that the Bible describes the creation of life by people coming from another planet on the Earth. And Buddha, Mohammed, they had a lot of messengers to give traces of what they did. And you can find the same kind of message in, not only in the Bible, but in the Quran. The oddity is that so many things that are mentioned in the Bible seem to be coming historically proven or scientifically proven as time goes on, uh, lends an authenticity to the fact that the Bible has its origin in something that's a little bit more than just simply primitive. Extraterrestrial activity didn't end in biblical times. Our modern UFO history has taken on a life of its own. UFOs have gotten a lot of publicity over the last 50 years, and it's like this is the new, kind of our new window on the universe, if you will. Uh, this is how we expect to encounter beings that are perhaps greater than ourselves, or certainly beyond anything we know now. We, we don't, people don't see angels now in the way that they used to, or receive visions from heaven in quite the way that was fashionable to do 2,000 years ago. This is the contemporary form of receiving a vision. 
The vision that began the UFO movement, most will agree, was in 1947, when a pilot named Kenneth Arnold spotted nine silvery disc-shaped craft flying over the Cascade Mountains in Washington. He later described to a reporter that they flew like a saucer would if you skipped it across the water. From that, the term flying saucer was coined. The story that you read in the books, in the magazines, or that you hear on the TV shows about a particular UFO cases almost invariably is, uh, is it, it's a very polished, you know, finely honed story, and all the rough edges have been kind of, kind of knocked off and smoothed down, but it's those rough edges that you have to find in order to find out what was really was there. What really crashed in Roswell, New Mexico shortly after that in 1947 still remains a mystery. People claim that a UFO crashed in Roswell. Of course, there is no alien wreckage or anything like that, that uh, to be found. Supposedly a, not a disc-shaped craft, but a uh, rectangular or heel of your shoe-shaped craft. Um, it's bluff right directly behind us here. We have photographs of what was supposedly recovered, and in fact, it appears to be what we think it is, which is just the remnants of a balloon, an airborne uh, reconnaissance balloon that, that came down. But people have been spinning the tails uh, over the last 50 years, and the story just gets better and better. Now we have multiple crashes, multiple crash sites, mid-air collision, bodies over here of little aliens. It did have five occupants, and they all passed away shortly after the military arrived. We have lots of stories. What we do not have is any evidence of any kind that any of this is true. To pacify public inquiry and squelch rumors of government cover-ups and disinformation, an official investigative team called Project Blue Book was organized to look into Roswell and the hundreds of sightings that followed. Although more than 94% of the cases were explained away, more than 700 were not and are officially unidentified flying objects. When the wave of close encounters began shortly after, Many of these contactees claim to know the meaning behind these alien visitations and believe they were of a religious nature. From the very beginning of the UFO era in the uh, 1950s, right almost from the very start, people were, were claiming uh, to have received religious messages from the Space Brothers. Some who have claimed to receive such messages have started New Age religions or cults based on their contact with these alien gods. Certain groups have taken this belief as far as committing mass suicide. In March of 1997, two cults chose to die for their belief. The first was in Canada by a New Age religious cult called the Order of the Solar Temple. The second was by another that has received more attention than any other New Age cult, the Heaven's Gate Religious Organization. On March 26th, in a small San Diego suburb, 39 members committed mass suicide after their leader, Marshall Applewhite, asked his followers to join him in death. Applewhite, who claimed to be Jesus reincarnated, said there was a UFO accompanying the hale bopp comet. This UFO would bring the followers to be reincarnated on another planet. But experts believe that cases like Heaven's Gate are rare. The Heaven's Gate group didn't do um, religions as such much good. <laughs> because uh, there are a lot of people who after the Heaven's Gate group would say, would say that's, the, that's what's going to happen in any of these groups if you let them loose. Um, my personal feeling is that uh, most, by all odds, most of these groups are not like that. I think that there are signs and that there were signs with the Heaven's Gate that it could 
blow up, or in this case, implode. And uh, one of these, one of those traits is uh, that it's antisocial. The Heaven's Gate group um, had turned in on itself very, very early. Um, as it did that, it, it increasingly de decreased um, over a period of time. Um, and its final core was only down to 40 people. Uh, from at one point, they had as many as 100, 200 people who had joined them. And at the point, they began to talk about suicide internally. Despite negative press created by groups similar to Heaven's Gate, the UFO phenomenon continues unabated. It has become an entertainment and cultural phenomenon, growing more popular every year. Once you got Steven Spielberg making all kinds of movies, then people become more accepting of, of claims of close encounters and of, of, of ET interactions. This close encounter culture over the last several decades has given rise to a number of groups who have turned their belief into true faith. What we have is the Urantia book, a 2,097 page volume, which is a history of our planet. And Urantia is what other people from other worlds call our planet. So it's the Earth book. And it's the Earth book for all to hear and see. But what we have here is a condensed version of the Urantia book, which focuses on the four previous only universal government approved alien missions to Earth. And there's only been five, and the Urantia book is number five. Jesus was number four. The major UFO religious groups that have emerged, most of them emerged in the 50s and 60s, uh, center their life around these superior UFO beings. Like the other groups, the Urantia book is a channeled book from an individual. Unlike the other groups, the person who channeled the book is uh, not a person who's known to the members. He was a person who wanted to be anonymous. When we come back, we'll delve deeper into the world of the Urantia Foundation and three other UFO groups to uncover their philosophies and why they feel the answers to the mystery of life in the universe can be found among alien beings. Uh, one of the major sources for new religions are people who profess to have had a, a special contact with a transcendent source, an angel, God, uh, ascended masters, or, or whoever. So it's not surprising to find among the UFO groups that the overwhelming majority of the leaders uh, operate as, as people who are bringing forth a new revelation. And of course what makes them unique is they're bringing it forth from the Space Brothers. It was the first book on Earth to claim to have been authored by alien beings not of this world. And this book is a cosmology which a philosophy and religion and science which takes us from this planet all the way to paradise. The Urantia book portrays uh, reality as a progressive evolution uh, containing interplanetary reincarnation, meaning that your spirit um, lives on and you get a new body on each succeeding planets. Experts like Dr. Gordon Melton have noted that this interplanetary reincarnation idea is a commonality among UFO groups. It's an idea that first came up in spiritualism in the late 1800s, but has been passed on uh, through and it's become pretty much the bailiwick of UFO groups. Uh, it's quite a logical idea that if we reincarnate, maybe we don't reincarnate on Earth all the time. 
Uh, actually, there are so many people on earth right now that we don't have room in earth's history for all the incarnations that could have been in the past. Hence, to say that these people reincarnated on other planets really helps the idea of reincarnation. After your life, your first life in the flesh, you are brought before a tribunal of judges from paradise and they decide upon your motivations in life and if they were good then you go into the next world and are issued a new body uh, and you, your spirit begins there just as it left off here uh, and those who do not make the cut do not go to hell they just become as if they never were. The Urantia book claims to have the answers to creation yet it mixes its own philosophies with figures found in the Bible. The first two human beings were born uh, almost exactly one million years ago. They were, according to the Urantia book, they were born of lemur-like, ape-like creatures. Human beings lived on this world in a semi-savage state for 500,000 years and then the universe government decided to send their first mission here. Adam and Eve were uh, biological scientists trained for 12,000 years together uh, on our system capital called Jerusalem. The Urantia book explains that the different races of the world were born out of an unusual circumstance. In northern India, there was a gigantic racial war, probably the greatest racial war in the history of the world. And it ended with the 100 superior families that were the finest fighters, most intelligent people. And out of one of these families, an, an incredible thing happened. In one family, all of the colored races of this world were born. They say in the Urantia book, they purposely put colored races into the world where they're different so that the inhabitants can prepare for their universal career by gaining tolerance for creatures that do not look like you. The third alien mission to Earth, as described in the Urantia book, set the stage for the arrival of Jesus. Jesus is one of 700,000 what they call Michael sons. These Michael sons are the creators of all the universes of time and space. Jesus, among others, was thought to be an alien who came from outer space. That's not an entirely new idea. Uh, in fact, is the whole the concept Messiah and uh, Son of God. Those are those words that are applied to Jesus uh, and do imply, as from the very early time, that he got here with a very different kind of uh, background. Dr. Andron, however, feels that this is a contradiction in terms. Many of them are, are not professing to be religions. They're professing to be philosophies, which means that you can stay what you are and believe them too and not give anything that you've got up, but have something more. As a rule, that tends to be contradictory. Many people around the world have found faith in the Urantia book since its founding in the early 1950s, but they are by far not the only group embracing a message from the aliens. Next, we're going to look at a UFO organization called the Unarius Academy of Science. Unarius teaches us that each one of us when we so-called die, we're actually not dying at all. We're losing a physical body, but we're gaining in our spiritual self. We go on into, if you want to call it heaven, Unarius terms it the spiritual worlds or inner planes. The beings who live on these other planets of the Interplanetary Confederation, their whole planets live by this. So this is why Unarius uh, every year holds an annual event called the Conclave of Light where we teach about and talk about and become aware of these brothers on these other worlds. Welcome to Planet Vitus.
Unarians claim to know the history of our planet Earth beyond recorded time. In fact, they claim to have history of many ancient and lost civilizations. We were basically living the life of Aborigines. This is about 156, 160,000 years ago. This civilization reached a tremendous height, and uh, it was um, uh, the point where everything was running very smoothly and progressively. Spiritual leaders were treated with respect and everybody treated each other with respect. But there was a little bit of the past came up in certain individuals and all of a sudden the control factors came in. We formed together and to return to do what we were doing in an area called Orion. An emperor had a motivating factor of let's take over and help people, but guide them in the way he wanted things to be done. And those of us that went along with him, well, it did caused the War of the Worlds. So this history of this destruction that went on at that time uh, put us all into the astral and we had another chance to reincarnate in an area called Atlantis. Well, when Atlantis closed, there was another opportunity. Egypt, ancient Egypt, we then went against the spiritual forces again. So it's been a real, uh, shall we say from that time on, an educational process. The brothers have been coming to help us to learn about ourselves. The Unarians believe that the Space Brothers are coming to help resolve the mysterious problems of the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is where a broken generator from Atlantis, when Atlantis actually blew up, the broken generator is there and at random, not any scheduled time, at random, it will actually activate. And it brings in tremendous energy to where a person, if they're in that area at that time, they'll disappear, move right into the fourth dimension. Unarius says that they attempt to explain the origin of atomic life within new interdimensional science. Well, that sounds very nice, but it's a lot of mumbo jumbo. What is atomic life? What is interdimensional science? They have no experiments or scientific publications or anything like that that relates to any of these things. Those are just terms that they're tossing around. Who is responsible for founding this New Age philosophy? Dr. Ernest and Ruth Norman are really cosmic visionaries. You see, they're really people who came to Earth for a mission. And that mission was to raise the consciousness of the people on Earth as to their true spiritual identity. The future of the Earth world is positive, progressive. We promise you. This is a good sample of our Unarius Library. We have over 150 books printed. They all represent a different facet of Unarius. And here we have the truth of Jesus of Nazareth, which is the real story of Jesus and his mission here on earth. The groups really base their religion upon the channeled material that comes through their founders. And uh, in the case of Unarius, there are 50 books that they have that cover all kinds of topics. Um, they're paying lip service to the Old Testament and to a few other holy books and paying lip service to Jesus is really a secondary theme and in part it's done to play to the larger culture. They have a leader who claims to receive divine inspiration or channeling from some being in, in some superior being at some higher spiritual plane and then this religious leader then takes these messages and delivers them to the, the followers. And how so does this channeling occur? Will you come in? This is Electra. This model of a future city on Earth was channeled to co-founder Uriel. 
And as you can see, there's a fence all the way around, which isn't really a fence, but it's, it's kind of like a circular area where we have the different hieroglyphics and different sculptures and carvings in the side that tell the story of the planet. The cities on the higher spiritual worlds are very geometrically and beautifully designed. Welcome. Being a member of Unarius means embracing again, these visions, messages and teachings from the Space Brothers. A life-altering decision. My whole life is completely year, different than it was before. It's love and action. Love and it works. It's not a, a um, simple philosophy or a Let worship of some other begin. thing or, or some entity. It's an actual working principle of life. When we return, we'll learn of another group who claims to be bringing forth information from the aliens about our past, present, and future. The Raelian movement, like Unarius, brings forth messages from alien beings. However, the nature of the messages and method of transmission to the founder, Rael, are separate and distinct. Communicate their messages. Well, I think that the the Raelians have the most distinctive uh, beliefs, um, and uh, for one thing, they don't believe in a spiritual realm as as we normally think of it, and they don't believe in a soul or a spirit as we normally think of it. They. Um, <coughs> They accept kind of a modification of what's called the ancient astronaut hypothesis. The Raelian movement's leader, Rael, compares himself with Jesus Christ. He claims that the ancient astronauts or extraterrestrials that inseminated his mother were also the ones who inseminated Mary. They didn't choose me, they chose my mother like it was done for Jesus before. They, uh, what you call in America, uh, uh, how do you say that, when some people say they were abducted. In fact, Mary was uh, abducted, and then the son she had was Jesus. And they did the same in 1945, December 25. Uh, they took my mother, and I, my father is also one of them. And they took me aboard the UFO, and we traveled on the planet where they live. And I could see, uh, I cannot say something more powerful that if it was my choice, I never came back. Because the civilization I saw was so great, so, so wonderful that uh, you have to be masochist if, to, to come back on the Earth. Rael believes that the extraterrestrials are really no different than humans. The only difference is that they're 25,000 years ahead of us technologically. These people, they are like us. And they were a long time ago at the same level we are now on this planet, on Earth, about science. What does it mean? We start to create a life in laboratory, thanks to DNA, genetic computation, cloning. And at the same time, we start to travel, to explore our universe. And they came on the Earth a very long time ago. There was no life, nothing. And they built the big laboratories and thanks to DNA, genetic combination, cloning, they did create all life on Earth. And that means plants, animals, and eventually men in their image. The Bible describes the creation of life by people coming from another planet. Unfortunately, that kind of idea really doesn't answer the question because it merely says we got here from off planet but then the question becomes where did the people who are off planet come from so it just just pushes the idea a little further into the the back doesn't really answer the creation question Rael believes he has the answers to the creation question and more so at the beginning they came they created life on earth it was just a scientific experimentation for them then they realized they had been created by the same way and that we are a cycle, it's a cycle and we human beings will do the same. What's interesting is that the Raelians believe that the Elohim created mankind. Elohim is a Hebrew name for God 
in the first book of Genesis. Now, Rael actually uses this word Elohim in plural, trying to say that there's not one God, but many gods that created mankind. They gave to human beings the Bible, and they sent some messengers on the earth. You remember Moses speaking face, speaking face to face to, not God, but Elohim, at the top of the Mount Sinai. It was speaking with them, of course, Moses was speaking with them. Jesus was the son of one of them, that's the reason why he was saying, my father was in the sky. Jesus was, a fa his father was one of these people, the Elohim, and the girl from the earth, Mary. Most of the new UFO groups have taken um, their basic teachings out of a, either theosophy or spiritualism from, from the past. And, uh, one of the things that they have done <clears throat> is adopt an understanding of the Bible that's uh, um, kind of picking and choosing what they would like to, to see and have and ig ignoring all the rest. Rael claims that the Bible and the many prophets were sent by the Elohim for an express purpose. In the Veda, Buddhist Veda, in, uh, in the Himalaya tradition, in the Inca tradition, everywhere in the world, they, they gave some proof of what they did. So now they can come back and say, we are those who created you a long time ago. And the mission they gave me is to spread this message and to build an embassy. Together, we will uh, build this embassy and we will welcome them and that's going to be the day. So when the Elohim come, they will bring with them all of the prophets, as it spoke of in the Bible, the, the prophets of old. Jesus is still alive through cloning. When he died, they take a cell and give him another body and they know thanks to this very advanced science, how to transfer memory and personality from one body to another body. And so, uh, through cloning, Jesus is alive, Buddha, Mohammed, uh, uh, all the big religious leaders of the past are alive, and we'll come back with them in the embassy in order to unify the planet. Well, many of the people that become Raelians are people that can't really relate to traditional religious theology, so they're looking for an alternative or maybe a form of escapism. I was raised a Catholic. Um, I didn't understand that religion. It was filled with, uh, it was like a dichotomy between me and the religion because I had certain feelings as a young girl, but this religion was telling me that these feelings were bad and they weren't good, so I didn't know what to believe. These, uh, groups are replacements for the family. So there's a family structure that people do not have or wish they had a different type of family structure. Specifically, there's a family structure that's too strict, too rigid, and the person is treated like an imbecilic child, and they have no respect at all given to them. They're just a child, and that's it. So here this person leaves that type of family structure, finds a very accepting, loving group, and, uh, and they belong to that. Not only are the Raelian views on the creation of life unique, but so are their beliefs about the afterlife. If you're a Raelian and you die, you're supposed to have your pituitary gland cut out of your head and put in deep freeze and then they will, the Elohim, when they come, will regenerate you whole from your pituitary gland. When a person dies, uh, they can be recreated to live another lifetime. This is the first step. The, the second step would be you know, to implant the memory of the previous life. So that way the person lives on forever through one body after another. When you die, they, they, they check the computer to give you an image uh, which recorded everything you did, you did in your life. And if it's positive, they give us this wonderful gift to have eternal life on their planet. And I went in 1975 on their planet and I saw 
with my eyes, physically, human beings who were dead on the earth and recreated on their planet. How does this cloning process work? Everybody speak about cloning. Let's summarize a little bit cloning. Now what we can do is take some cell of somebody and create a baby. And this baby is a new human being. The second step is when you, we will be able through accelerated growth process, AGP. This is the technique they allow him use. We take a cell from your body and we can create directly an adult replica of who you are, 17 years old, but like a blank tape, without memory, without personality, without education. And the third step, the more interesting, is when we will be able, and some scientists already are working on it, to, in this blank tape body, transfer your memory, your personality, so you die, but you wake up in this new body for a new life. And I am very proud to be the first to create a human cloning company also last year named Cloned, because cloning is, is a secret to give us, to give to ourselves eternal life. And if you remember the Elohim in the Bible, they say one day men will equal, not God, their creators, Elohim. And we are, in, right now, in the process of Elohimization. We are becoming ourselves Elohim. Why? Because we will go on another planet and create life. Because we are discovering cloning, which is the key to discover eternal life. Whether or not people agree with the views of the Raelians and other UFO groups, Dr. Lewis says there is no reason to fear them. I'm sure anyone that meets the Unarians or meets the Raelians, you know, finds something appealing and nice about them. The Raelians are people among other people in the society. We don't have any community or people. We don't want to be separate from the society like some cult are, you know, secluded. We want to be with other people. Their beliefs may be outlandish, but the Raelians make up an organization of 35,000 members that span the globe. The oldest UFO organization is another international group founded in 1954 by a man named George King, who also claims special contact with the extraterrestrials. The Aetherius Society is an international, spiritual, metaphysical brotherhood that was established in London, England by its founder, George King, who passed away on July the 12th, 1997. Uh, the organization uh, is dedicated to world peace and spiritual enlightenment and bringing to the world the teachings of what we term the cosmic masters. George King was, had been involved in various forms of occultism uh, and involved with yoga, and other things before he started the Aetherius Society and uh, he began by claiming to channel uh, space beings and he moved from that to claiming to channel the folks who were piloting UFOs. Members of Aetherius say that it was these special abilities that put King in a unique position to be chosen as a channel by the extraterrestrials. He had studied and practiced the science of yoga to bring about a tremendous discipline over his uh, mental abilities to such an extent that he was able to receive uh, uh, information sent to him uh, by these intelligences through telepathy. Alan Mosley explains the messages channeled to King during this alien contact that are at the core of the movement. The messages that have come from the Cosmic Masters uh, indicate many things to us. One, that our uh, foray into atomic experimentation was not a very wise thing to do uh, because they have said many times 
that we have only been able to measure one aspect of radiation, they can measure the other six. And that it does affect our world in a very negative manner. George King addresses the core of religion, claiming that the cosmic masters revealed the secrets of the origin of life and the afterlife. They have stated that most people on this earth came from a planet that they refer to as Maldek, a planet the remains of which is the asteroid belt that orbits between Mars and Jupiter today. Uh, we had to go somewhere as a race of people and the only suitable place to gain experience was this Earth. And so we destroyed a planet many millions of years ago and then two of our own civilizations on this world at Lemuria and Atlantis. And what the Cosmic Mass has been trying to do desperately since the 1940s is to help us evolve quickly and get back on the spiritual path to avoid causing ourselves another catastrophe like we have three times in the past. Man on this earth dies, goes to the subtle realms, uh, is there for a while, then reincarnates back to gain further experience and hopefully to evolve. Dr. Lewis explains that their reincarnation theory is simply a new twist on an old idea. What many UFO religions do is to take these ideas, ideas of spiritual masters and other spiritual realms and substitute people who are on the UFOs, the Space Brothers. There are other intelligences who come from outside of this solar system uh, who come to this earth to observe and to learn. They have different bodies sometimes. Uh, they come from very, very different uh, environmental backgrounds, but they very much actively cooperate with the cosmic masters if they're coming to this earth. Many skeptics question the possibility of space travel as it relates to these UFO groups like Aetherius. There's no reason that interstellar travel is impossible. However, it would have to take a very long time because it takes light, which travels at the ultimate velocity, many years to travel between even the nearby stars. And then as we get to distant galaxies, we're talking about hundreds of thousands and indeed millions or many millions of years just to get between the galaxies. And of course, it's not merely that it's difficult to accelerate to the velocity of light. It's, it's simply not possible because you would need more energy than there is in the universe just to get up there. And even if you get close to the speed of light, then you would need tremendous amounts of fuel, not just to speed yourself up, but then to slow yourself down when you get there. You'd never be able to come back. Every little interstellar molecule you'd hit would have such force that it would be like being sandblasted uh, with a machine gun. But the Aetherius Society believes that these are only practical problems, as far as we know it, with the limited knowledge that we have on this planet. Scientists um, say categorically now that uh, speed of light is the ultimate velocity, um, but don't forget that the, the same type of scientists said many centuries ago categorically that Earth was the center of the universe. The Aetherius Society has their own view of the universe and mankind's role in it. Dr. Melton explains that their cosmic concept deviates from the traditional view, as do most New Age groups. Christians, we think of ourselves as being creatures of God, something God created. Um, but within the New Age movement, most often people think of themselves as either being a spark of God inhabiting a body or being God uh, themselves. As far as our cosmic concept is concerned, we believe that God is everything in creation. One of the elements that might surprise a lot of people is that the information from the cosmic masters indicates quite definitely that the Earth and indeed other planets uh, in this solar system are 
living intelligences. What do we do? Well, we're still exploding nuclear weapons in its body. Not too bright a thing. People often under, wonder why earthquakes happen. It's no great mystery, is it, really? One of the most popular missions that we uh, perform in, in the Ethereum Society is known as Operation Prayer Power. Through the course of a month, um, people come together in uh, the temple here and other places around the world, and they say a mantra and prayer, and they invoke tremendous spiritual energy, and it is put into a battery, a radionic battery, which can store spiritual energy. And then when a catastrophe happens, such as an earthquake or a famine, this energy can be released in a very, very concentrated form and sent to that area and really help relieve the suffering. The Etheria Society believes that the cosmic masters will one day come into the earth and confirm their existence, but they make no grand predictions as to when this ship will land. There is a cosmic law saying that if you don't have enough wisdom with the level of science you have, before you're capable of going out of your solar system and destroy yourself as a humanity. I think for most of us who look at UFO groups, um, view them in much the same light as we review UFOs, uh, we think it's possible that there are extraterrestrials somewhere. There's been a lot of claims of what could be seen as evidence throughout the ages but the universe still remains a mystery. The truth is out there.